Christmas magic. When I was little, I liked Christmas time the best. At Christmas time, everything twinkled and sparkled and looked different and magic. One Christmas tree for Grandad. But there was one Christmas when we were going to have a very special Christmas day. Climbing up. One Christmas cake for Grandad. We were going to stay with Grandad. We were going to make Christmas magic for Grandad too. Yeah. I chose a special Christmas present for Grandad from me. It was a big, big Santa. Before we went to Grandad, we listened to Christmas carols. Carols were in a big, high place. When we came out of a big, high place, it was snowing. Oh, Santa will love this. Why? So the reindeer can put a sleigh in the snow. The next day was Christmas Eve. It was all snowy. It was magical. Hooray! Santa can ride his sleigh. We put all the special things for Grandad's Christmas in the car. It was a long way to Grandad's. Mummy and me played I Spy. White and fluffy. Clown. Counting cars. How many red cars you can see? One, two... And sang songs. I love Willie and Willie loves, loves me. me. We've been together, together since we were wee. It was a long way to Grandad. We had to stop for lunch in a little cafe. After the cafe, Mummy drove the car. Daddy and me played I Spy. White and crunchy. Snow. Yay! Counting cars. So we see a blue car, we count, OK? One, two, and three, sang songs. We play hide and we play run. We have funny, funny, fun. Then Daddy fell asleep. Mummy, can you tell me a story? Uh, no, Ted, no, I've got to concentrate on driving. Outside, I couldn't see much. Just snow. Are we there yet? Uh, no, Ted, not yet. It was a long way to Grandad. I was bored. Hey, Tig, long journeys can be boring when there's nothing to do. But there is something you can do all by yourself. You can make up a story, a finger and thumb story, a finger and thumb Christmas story. Your fingers and thumbs can be all the different people in the story. Yeah, that's right. Go for it, Tig. Have a think and tell yourself a story with your fingers and thumbs. Yes, I thought. I can tell myself a story. Once upon a time, Mummy and Daddy and we, Pinky Tig, walked through the snow. A reindeer came along, pulling a sleigh. In the sleigh was Santa. Santa looked just like Grandad. Then suddenly, we arrived at Grandad's house. It was like magic. I was so happy to see Grandad. Oh, happy Christmas Eve. The funny thing was, there was no snow now. Grandad, there's no snow. Oh, don't worry, take snow or no snow, Santa'll still get here. One Christmas tree for Grandad. Oh. Presents for Grandad. Open them now. No, not until tomorrow. We were bringing Christmas magic to Grandad. Our special Christmas Eve box. Oh. Mummy had a special Christmas Eve box. Grandad said I could open it. When I opened the box, there was a brand new pair of Christmas pajamas. A stocking to hang up for Santa. For all my presents. And some funny toys for us all to play with. Frog race. Oh, frog race! And we'll go make the summer. Come on then. Then Grandad and me had a race. Okay, Tick. We ready? One, two, three, go! 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 <laughs> After supper, I put in my new Christmas pajamas. Outside there was still no snow. Biscuits for Santa. We need to leave them at the chimney. Oh, but look, Grandad doesn't have a chimney. 
Granddad needs to have a chimney. I know. Why don't we go and put it in the hall, okay? Come on then, we'll go and leave it in the hall. Chimney or no chimney, Santa's still going to leave you presents. Granddad didn't have a chimney. So we left the biscuits at the front door. Yeah. Okay. I hung my stocking at the end of my bed. Mummy, how will Santa know I'm at Grandad's house, not my house? Because Santa will always know where you are, Tig. Right, come on, into bed. <laughs> Santa will always know where you are, said Mummy. Mummy kissed me. Night, night. But I couldn't go to sleep. I was worried. There was no snow for Santa's sleigh. No chimney for Santa to climb down. And did Santa know I was staying at Grandad's? Hey, Tig, it's a worry to wonder how Santa will visit with no snow, no chimney, and not knowing where you are staying. But hey, sometimes things just happen. That's the magic. Especially when Grandad says, snow or no snow, Santa will still get here. Especially when Daddy says, chimney or no chimney, Santa will still bring presents. Especially when Mummy says, Santa will always know where you are. I want to see Santa. Hey, I'm sure Santa wants to see you too. But for magic to happen, there's no peeping. If you peep, it wouldn't be magic. Go for it, Tig. Pop into bed and snug down to sleep. Think of cosy, happy thoughts. And soon it will be Christmas Day. Close your eyes for sleepy buys. Float all fluffy and light. Smiles and kisses and giggles and hugs will snooze you through the night. And then it was Christmas Day. My room was filled with snowflakes. It was magic! At the end of the bed was my stocking filled by Santa. Merry Christmas, Tig! Merry Christmas. Oh. Wow, so Santa found you. I thought you would. Off you go. Around the Christmas tree we opened more presents. Best of all, was giving Mummy her present from me. Oh my goodness, I love these. Oh, lovely. Very nice. What is it? Best of all, was it? giving Daddy his present from me. Oh, I love it. It suits you. Best of all, was giving Grandad his present from me. Oh, <laughs> His very own Santa. Just like you, Grandad. I think it looks a bit like me. My best present was my magic set from Grandad. No, it's Ted's magic show. Right. After lunch, I did a magic show. No peeping, I said. It wouldn't be magic if you do. Abracadabra. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are going to do the most amazing trick. Whoa. There's an empty hat. Right. Oh. It's only a toy spider. <laughs> Go for it, Tig. I liked making Christmas magic for Grandad. There's an empty hat. Right. I love Willy. We guess it's to a The play. When I was little, I liked going to see plays. It was exciting. People dressed up and did funny things. I wanted to be in a play too. Once I was going to be in a play at nursery. I was going to dress up as a king. But then I 
had chicken pox, so I couldn't be in the play. Once there was a lady called Cinderella. One day, Mummy said they were choosing children to be in a play. The children's theatre are additioning for children to play the toy soldiers. Do I get to dress up? Yeah, but they have to choose the children first. Yippee! Yippee! I said, I'd like to be a toy soldier and dress up in a play. On the day of the choosing, I was very excited. We went to the children's theatre. There were lots of other children. There you are, let's go in there. Right, uh, Mr Tonka. Mr Tonka's there over on the piano. Mr Tonka was on the piano. We had to march like toy soldiers. It was fun. I loved the marching. When can I dress up? I said to Mummy. We have to wait for the choosing tag. When we were waiting, the man talked to Mummy and then we went away. Mummy and me went to a little cafe. Why can't I be a toy soldier, Mummy? Mummy, why will I be a toy soldier? I'm sorry, Tig, but they didn't choose you to be a toy soldier. I'm sorry, Tig, but they didn't choose you. The thing is, they need the toy soldiers to be a little bit taller. The toy soldiers need to be a bit taller than you. You wait there, I'll get us a good treat. I was sad. I wanted to be in a play. Hey, Tig, it's not nice when other people are chosen and not you. That's not fair, Willie. Yes, it doesn't seem fair. You wanted to be in a play. You wanted to be a toy soldier. But not everyone can be chosen all at the same time. Sometimes you just have to wait and try again and have another go. You might not be a toy soldier this time, but hey, there are plenty more plays and dressing up. When one door closes, bang! Another door will open. Yippee! So go for it, Tig. Don't be sad. You just never know what's around the corner. Yes, I thought. I was sad I couldn't be a toy soldier, but you never know what's around the corner. Just then, someone came round the corner. Hi, Tam. How are you? Oh, all the better for seeing you too. Hello, Tig. Hi. It was a man Hello. called Tam. Oh, bit of a disaster. Oh, dear. Opening tomorrow, Elves and the Shoemaker at the Children's Theatre. Tam was doing a children's play, The Elves and the Shoemaker. One of the elves has chicken pox. But one of the elves had chicken pox. I wondered, would you like to be an elf? Do I need to dress up? Oh, yes, as an elf. OK. I was in a play. It's a bit of a rush, though. Rehearsals this afternoon. I was so excited. In the afternoon, Tam showed me what to do on the stage. This is Louise now. She's the other um, elf. I know you know Louise. Louise. Of course you do. Right now, so what? She's one of the elves and you're the other elf. My friend Louise was another elf. And Tam was the shoemaker. The two elves run onto the stage. When the shoemaker grows old, said Tam, the elves make his shoes. Tam showed us how to make the shoes. Ready, ready. And snip, snip, snip. Cutting the leather. Stitch, stitch, stitch. Sewing together. Tip, tip, tap. He was so clever to make a fine pair of shoes. We practised a lot. Tam gave me music for the play. I practised the play at home. Stitch, stitch, stitch. Tip, tip, tap. So clever to make a fine pair of shoes. The next day was the day of the play. Louise and me did our dressing up. We had ears on our hats. We looked different. We looked like elves. It was nearly time for the play. Mummy took me to the stage. Mummy didn't quite know the way. When we got to the stage, it was the wrong stage. There was a funny man doing another play. Here we are, Ted. This is the wrong stage. No, Ted, look, that's Tam. That's not Tam. That is Tam. 
I was going to be late. I had to find Tam. Then I found Daddy. Suddenly, the funny man started to sing. Hey, there once was a maker, a maker of shoes. A shoemaker making his shoes. His play was like ours. I liked it. I knew all the words. Then Daddy said I should be on the stage. What are you doing here? That's not Tom. Yes, it is. You're supposed to be up there on the stage. But where was Tom? Hey, Tig, people in plays can look different because they dress up. People in plays look different because they put makeup on. People in plays look different because sometimes they wear different hair. I look different, you look different, and Tam looks different. You look different because you are dressed up as a cheeky wee elf. Tam looks different because he's the shoemaker with his glasses, moustache and hair. Well, the clever shoemaker, the older he grew, the slower he's making his shoes. That's Tam on stage. Time for the elves to make the shoemaker his shoes. Go for it, Tig. Yes, I thought. That is Tam. I should be on stage with him. We waited for the shoemaker to peep. Then we could be elves. Dozy shoemaker, he woke from his snooze and looked at the work on his shoes. The leather was tapped and stitched and sewed, shaping fine shoes from heels to toes. A pair of shoes, the best to choose. But who had been making his shoes? Stitch, 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 sewing together. Tick, tick, tack, shaping the leather. Shoes, shoes, shoes. Who is so clever to make fine pairs of shoes? Came rich, but who did the sewing and stitched? He worked and he slipped, but at night did not sleep. Keeping awake, he took a peep. Me and Louise were making the shoemaker his shoes. We were the elves. Stitch, 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 sewing together. Tip, tip, tap, shaping the leather. Zip, zip, zip. They were so clever, the elves were making shoes. Was a maker, a maker of shoes, a shoemaker making his shoes. He worked with the elves and he slipped and they sold, shaping new shoes from heels to toes, making fine shoes and hairs to choose. A shoemaker, elves and their shoes. Snip, 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 cutting the leather, stitch, 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 sewing together. They were so clever to make fine pairs of shoes. play, everyone clapped. When everyone saw Wooly, they all went, ah! It's only a toy spider. He's only my toy spider, I said. I like the elves and the shoemaker. I like being in a play. I love Wooly. Hogmanay. When I was little, we had summer, and my birthday, and snowballs, and Christmas. I liked Christmas the best. Oh. But what I really liked was that after Christmas, we went to stay with my granny. Willie came too. Mummy, Daddy and me slept in the sitting room. I slept on a blow-up bed. Hey. Mummy and Daddy slept on the sofa. It grew into a bed. It was exciting staying at Granny's after Christmas. One morning, Mummy said, Tig is a very special day today. Do you know what day it is? It's Hogmanay. What's Hogmanay? 
Hogmanay is the very last day of the year. Hogmanay is the very last day of the year. So that means no more days in the universe. So no more days. There will be lots more days, because tomorrow will be New Year. Like there's going to be more days. We've got the whole new year. Exciting things. Yeah. I didn't like it being the last day. I liked this year. When we went into the town, it was so exciting. It was like a big party. There was a fun fair in the streets with a big wheel and a carousel. Everything looked magic. And music everywhere. Hogmanay was a special day. Hogmanay was fun. Everyone seemed so happy. No one seemed to mind it was the last day. When it got dark, there was a big procession with fire torches. A band played with bagpipes. Bagpipes. When we got home, Granny had made a steak pie. pie. Steak pie, my favorite. It was so good. Is it still Hogmanay, Mummy? I just tell Hogmanay, Mummy. Yeah, it is, Ted. Isn't that exciting? Mummy, look at my tiny teeth. When it was bedtime, Mummy said, Tig, tonight you're going to sleep in Granny's bed. Isn't that exciting? Why am I sleeping in Granny's bed? Because Hogmanay goes long into the night and that is when you and Because me... Hogmanay is a very long day. Then Granny came in with a little tree. This is my special Hogmanay wish tree. Because this is my special Hogmanay wishing tree. Everybody has to make a wish. And once you've made your wish, you pop a fairy onto the tree. What do I wish, Granny? I said. What wish? Well, you could wish for something good to happen in the new year. I don't know, I said. I don't know, Granny. Oh, well, you think about it. And that's your wee fairy to pop on the tree. You have to think, said Granny. I was sad. I didn't want a new year. Wee! Hey, Tig, no need to be sad. Hogmanay might be the last day of one year, but tomorrow is the first day of a brand new year. But what about this year? This year will always be there as happy memories of summer and snowballs and your birthday and Christmas. But tomorrow will be a new year when you can look forward to summer and snowballs and your birthday and Christmas all over again. Yippee! That's why everyone is so excited and happy on Hogman Eye. Everyone is looking forward to the new year. Yes. And what it will bring. So go for it, Tig. Don't be sad. Whoops! Make a wish for a happy and exciting new year. Yes, I thought. I love Hogmanay, but I'll make a wish for a happy new year where we can have summer, snowballs, and my birthday, and Christmas all over again. Before I went to sleep, Auntie Shona came in. I just came to put my wish on the wishing tree. Where's Clive? Where's your boyfriend Clive? I said. He's not here, I'm afraid. I wish he was. You're going to wish for that? Why don't you wish for him? I said. Yes, I think I might. Maybe I shall, said Auntie Shona. I've made my wish. And popped a fairy on the tree. Shona and Mummy kiss me night night. When you wake up, Tig, said Mummy, it will be New Year's Day. Good morning, it's going to be New Year's Day. I closed my eyes so my wish would come quickly. When I woke, it was dark. I heard music. I looked into Granny's sitting room. Mummy and Daddy were dancing. Shona was playing her fiddle. Oh, Tig. Oh, sorry, Tig. Is it New Year yet? Is it New Year? I said. No, it's still Hogmanay, said Mummy. Granny's having a wee party. Come and join in. 
We'll go meet the food mob. My wish hadn't come true. Is Clive here? I said to Auntie Shona. Is boyfriend Clive here? No, I'm afraid not. Oh, maybe that's Clive now, Shona. When Shona went to the door, she didn't come back with boyfriend Clive. It's Tam. Oh, Shona came back with a man I didn't know. Tam comes from next door, Tig. He's got a wonderful singing voice. Shona wasn't happy. I wasn't happy. Our wishes hadn't come true. Hey, Tig, some wishes can take a long time. Especially when you wake up in the night. But my wish hasn't come true. You've wished for a happy and exciting new year. But you have to wait for a new year to arrive first. New year can't happen just like that. We have to wait until it's exactly the right time. New year will arrive when all the clocks strike 12 o'clock midnight tonight. But hey, wee! Hogmanay makes the waiting fun. So go for it, Tig. Join in Granny's Hogmanay party. And it won't be long now before Hogmanay turns into New Year. Hooray! Yes, I thought. Hogmanay makes the waiting for New Year fun. On we go, heel for heel and toe for toe. Granny and me and Shona danced together. Then Mummy and Daddy came in with some party food. Haggis! The haggis. <laughs> the haggis looked funny. Suddenly Daddy said, it's Nearly New Year! It's nearly midnight. Ten! Nine! We eight, all counted backwards. Two! One! Nine, nine, Happy New Year! Everyone kissed and hugged. Outside fireworks shot up all over the place. Then the doorbell rang. It was Clive. Auntie Shona was so pleased. Granny was pleased too. When Clive gave her a lump of coal. This will bring us luck too. Mm -hmm. I showed Willie to Clive to say Happy New Year. <laughs> it's only a toy spider. <laughs> <laughs> then Tam from next door sang. And never brought to mind Should old acquaintance be forgot And all Willie sang too sign. Remember all the friends you have And all the things you've done Remember all the friends you have And all the fun to come Auntie Shona and Clive were happy. All our Hogmanay wishes had come true. It was New Year. We'd have summer and snowballs and birthdays and Christmas all over again. And I love Willie. We've been since Busy. When I was little, my mummy and daddy had a very busy day. Me and Wooly had a busy day too. I was busy doing my jigsaw. Mummy and Daddy were busy talking. Talk, talk, talk. Off we go. But my jigsaw, I said. Rush, rush, rush. We got into the car. Where's Wooly? Where's Wooly? Daddy stopped the car. At least the brakes work, said Mummy. <coughs> Mummy picked up Willy. Willy was just doing your jigsaw. Willy was trying to do the jigsaw. So was I. Daddy drove to the garage. See you later. Mummy rushed off. We went into a room with a window. We saw the car go up into the air. A man came to talk to Daddy. Why are you talking about it, Dad? Daddy's busy. In a minute, said Daddy. Talk, talk, talk. 
Whiz! The wheels came off the car. The wheels went back in the car. Whiz! Hooray! The wheels worked. Daddy drove us to the printers. Hi there. Hi there. I'm supposed to be meeting my wife here. Right. Talk, talk, talk. Printing for a presentation document. What are you talking about, Daddy? In a minute, no. said Daddy. Mummy came through the door. Oh, hi. Mummy. Hiya. Mummy! Daddy left to go to work. Bye. I need to get... Talk, talk, talk. ...size print scan to PDF and about... Mummy, what are you talking tonight. about? Yeah, Just I in a minute, Ted. Mummy's busy. In a minute, said Mummy. Do you want to do some drawing for me? Mummy gave me some drawing. Come on, here we go. One, two, three. Whee! Oh, sorry about that. That's OK. So... I drew a sun. Like Mummy a sun. Just in a minute, Tig. Mummy's busy. In a minute, said Mummy. Talk, talk, talk. I didn't like Mummy always busy. Hey, Tig, it's not nice when no one listens to you. It's not nice when no one looks at your pictures. But, Tig, Mummy and Daddy are having a busy day. You need to let them be busy. When Mummy and Daddy are busy, you need to be busy too. You've done one drawing, so why not do some more drawings? Why not make your very own jigsaw? Well, you've got one piece of your jigsaw, a sun. Here's another piece. Mm, dooby dooby dooby. Mm -hmm. What's that, do you think? <laughs> a roof. For a house. There's one half of your jigsaw. All you've got to do now is finish off the other half. What are you going to put under the sun? Tig. Yes, Tig. A picture of you would look great there. Go for it, Tig. Get busy. Yes, I thought. I can be busy too. Oh, well done, Tig. You've been so busy. You've done a jigsaw. The printer man made another of my jigsaws for Daddy. So when the printer man saw Willy, he made a face. Ah! It's only a toy spider. I like Mummy and Daddy being busy. I like being busy too. I love Willy. We think as is to a Bus raid. When I was little, my daddy took me to fly my kites. Is that the bus? Wait for the door to open. We went on a bus. The bus ride was fun. Can we get a two to the park, please? Daddy gave me the ticket to hold. Well, we came through. We sat on the chair. And Willie looked out of the window. When we got to a hilly bit, okay. Daddy pressed the bell and the bus stopped. Bye bye. Thank you. Daddy said thank you. That's a good girl. What a good girl you are, too. I said thank you and bye bye. Whoosh! Up on the hill, Daddy and me flew my kite. He flew my kite in lots of different ways. Sometimes I ran, sometimes Daddy ran, sometimes we both ran. After flying the kite, I was tired. We waited for the bus home. When the bus arrived, a man took so long I ran in front of him. Tig said, Daddy, wait your turn. Uh, two, please. I took the ticket. Tig said, Daddy, don't snatch. Sorry. Shh, said Daddy. Sit down, said Daddy. No feet on the seat. Daddy was getting really grumpy. A lady kept staring at me. 
I didn't like the lady staring at me. Tank, don't be so rude. I was tired and bored. Tank. Daddy was grumpy. Just in front of me was the bus bell. Hmm, I thought. Tank, did you press the bell? Tank, no! Said Daddy. Daddy was cross. Who rang the bell? It, it, it was us. We're, we're just coming. Come on, we're not going to have to go off the bus now. Get Wooly. Sorry, driver. Thank you, said Daddy, the driver. We're going to have to walk home. But I'm tired. Well, we'll have to wait for the next bus, OK? Horrid, Daddy. Just sit on that. Put your wee bottom on that, OK? OK. I was tired. Hey, Tig, I know you feel tired, but Daddy's not horrid. Daddy's tired too. But when Daddy's tired, he still says thank you to the bus driver. When Daddy's tired, he doesn't throw his bus ticket all over the bus. When Daddy's tired, he doesn't make a face to strangers. Just because you're tired doesn't mean you stop caring. When you feel tired, you can still be nice to people and make sure that whatever you do doesn't upset them. Ting! Hey and Tig, you pressed the bus bell, not Daddy. And that's why you're waiting for another bus. Daddy cares about you and you care about Daddy. So tell him. Go for it, Tig. Yes, I thought. I love my daddy. I said sorry to daddy. Sorry, dad. Oh, thank you, Tig. That's OK. Oh, him, <laughs> Come on, Tig. When the next bus came, I said thank you to the bus driver. Thank you. Oh, thanks, driver. When a lady smiled at me, I smiled at her. I showed her Willie. That's only a toy spider. I like smiles. I like being me. I love Willie. We beat guesses to a bee. Swing park. When I was little, my daddy took me to the swing park. Oh, we dropped Willie. Willie came too. On the way, Daddy kicks a ball. Oh, oh, you got it! I kicked the ball too. <laughs> at the playground, we ran around looking at all the things we could play on. The slide was very tall. Three, two, one, take and rolly, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I bounced on the springy seesaw. Daddy bounced on the springy seesaw too. Daddy and me jumped on the trampoline. Willie jumped too. I swung round and round in a basket. Lullaby baby. Daddy swung in the basket too. <laughs> what shall I do? I swung in the ropes. Daddy showed me what to do. Daddy was so funny, he hung upside down. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> this part's for children, you know. Oh, sorry. A man with a dog told Daddy that the playground was for children. Daddy said sorry. After the man with the dog, Daddy didn't do funny things. Then Daddy pointed. There's Angel, he said. Who's that over there on the seesaw? Angel! That's your friend. It was my friend Angel. Yeah. But then I saw Angel was playing with some other children. I didn't know them. I wanted angels to play with me. Daddy said I should go and ask to join in. No, I said. I felt left out. Angel was playing with new friends 
and not me. Hey, Tig, you've always got me to play with. Watch me. Hey Tig, it would be fun to join in Angel's game. Are you worried she might say no? So, why not ask Angel and her friends to join in your game? And your game is sliding Wooly down the slide. OK! Whee! Yeah, I said grab Wooly. Said Angel, come and see Willy slide down the slide. Yeah, said Angel. We all slid Willy down the slide. Wee! Come on, one, three, two, one. Then we all ran off together. We pulled the bell ropes. Bang, bang, ting, well... Daddy found Willy. Ah! It's only my toy spider, I said. I love playing with my new friend. I love Willy. We've been together since we were three. Losing things. When I was little, Daddy and Mummy took me to the jungle house. One, two, I wore my favourite <laughs> wild animal clothes. My tiger woolly hat, monkey gloves and hissy snake scarf. Willie came too. I was very cold going to the jungle house. Inside the jungle house, the jungle was very hot. Oh, it's lovely. Oh, it's so warm in here. Look, look at all the glass. The jungle house was made of glass. There was a big palm tree in a pond with fishes. Tell you what, I think we need something to keep us going on our trek through the jungle. Mummy gave me some raisins. We saw a lady with no clothes. She is made of marble. Daddy said she was marbles. She didn't look like a marble to me. Daddy said the middle of the jungle smelt like fried socks. My head itched. Willy, where are you? Willy kept hiding in the trees. Is Willy in the jungle? Daddy said, careful not to lose Willy. I told Willy not to climb any more trees. <laughs> When we left the jungle house, it was cold again. We walked back through the park. After a bit, I got so cold I couldn't walk. Where are your gloves? Where's your hat? Where's your scarf? Oh, no. Where's your hat, said Daddy. Well, let's get this scarf around you. Let's get you nice and warm. Where's your gloves, said Mummy. And where's your scarf? I don't know, I said. Back in the house, it was nice and warm. I was sad. I'd lost my favourite clothes. Tig, I'm so sad that you lost your hat and your gloves and your scarf. Such a shame. Daddy made me feel more sad. Hey, Tig, I know how you feel. Losing things makes me feel sad too. Hey, Tig, maybe we could find your lost things. Take a deep breath and think back just to where you might have left things. First, we went to the jungle house. It was very hot. We looked at the fishes in the pond with the big palm tree. You took your monkey gloves off to eat the raisins. Then we saw the lady with no clothes. You took off your hissy snake scarf. In the middle of the jungle, it smelled like fried socks. Your head itched 
and you took off your tiger hat. There, you see. Now you can remember where you left everything. I thought very hard. I remembered everything. Mum, I love where my hat's stuck in the jungle house. Really? I told Mum and Daddy where my things were. Should I go back and get them? Daddy went back to the jungle house. He found my monkey gloves by the palm in the pond. My scarf by the lady with no clothes. My tiger hat in the middle of the jungle. Smelt of fried socks. And Daddy told us how he found everything. Well, I found the hat, the scarf, mm -hmm. a, and I also found the gloves. And it was because Tech knew where they were. <laughs> Daddy jumped. It's only my toy spider, I said. I'm glad I never lost Willy. I love Willy. We've been scared since we were three. Sharing. When I was little, my friend Angel came to play. I like playing with Angel. She's fun. See you later. Peekaboo. Peekaboo. We played people. We played sliding. We played jumping on the cushions. We. I liked playing with Angel. She makes me laugh. Why don't you go and show Angel your room? Mummy said, Tig, why don't you show Angel your toys? I showed Angel all my toys. The orange came on fire. <laughs> I'm making soup. That's um, that's in the soup for babies. Oh. I didn't like Angel holding my doll. It wasn't Angel's doll. It was my doll. I didn't want Angel to play with my toys anymore. I put Willie to bed. I put all my toys in my little house. Shouted, shouted, shouted! Sheesh. What's going on? I want to go home. Oh, of course you can, Angel. Let's go and ring your mum. Oh dear, said Mummy. That's sad you're going home so soon, Angel. Did Tig not want to share her toys? No. No, oh dear. And they went to ring Angel's mummy. Oh dear. Hey, Tig. It can be a bit funny seeing someone play with your toys. But Angel's your friend. Now she's gone. Whee! Hey, Tig. That's a big jumble of toys in there. That'll take some sorting. Shame there's no one to help. The good thing about sharing your toys is that your toys can suddenly become new and fun again. Maybe if you say a big, big sorry to Angel, she'll come back and play and you can have fun with your toys again. I didn't want Angel to go. She was my friend. I said sorry to Angel. Angel, I'm sorry. In a big, big way. I gave Angel Wooly to play with. <laughs> Angel said she would stay. Angel had Wooly under Mummy's work. Here's a chance. 
It's only my toy spider, I said. Funny! I like playing with Angel. We played and I shared my toys. <laughs> They're like new toys again. I love Willy. We've been together since we were three. Shadows. When I was little, I didn't like the dark. Willie didn't like the dark either. So Daddy bought me my very own light. The light came in a box. A lamp. A lamp. Ooh, that looks lovely, Ty. Should we go and set it up? Yeah, why don't we go and plug it in in your bedroom? Let's see what your new lamp is. Daddy okay. plugged the light in. Then we turned the light on. Turn it off. On. And then off again. Mummy, can I make something with the box? the box? I like the box that the light came in. Mummy said I can make something with the box. I made a puppet show. I painted inside the box. I didn't have puppets for my puppet show. When Mummy finished her work, she made me puppet birds. The birds were so sweet. She had little beaks and feather wings. Tug. The puppet birds could fly. Do you think they're friends? No, brother and sister. Oh, that's nice. At bedtime, I switched on my new light. Daddy and Mummy came to see my puppet show. Hey, little Jackie birds sitting on the wall. The puppet show was all about two birds who sat on the wall. The birds flew away and then came back. Come back, Tweety. Daddy and Mummy liked the puppet show. I snuggled down with Wooly. And all your lights will stay on until you fall asleep. Mummy left my new light on. Mummy left the big light on too. Then I went to sleep. That night I woke up. All the lights were off, but my very own light was on. It glowed. I felt safe. But when I looked up at the ceiling, something was new. I saw hairy monsters. I hid under the bedclothes. I peeped out. The hairy monsters were still there. I wanted to run away. Hey, Tig. Things can look scary at night because things can look different. The light and the dark play tricks. You just need to look again to find out what something really is. So I wonder what those hairy monsters could be. Let's peep. There's your new light. And look, just above the new light is your fluffy sheep mobile. And over there is... Oops! Big hairy monsters! Round and round they go, just like the sheep, because that's what the hairy monsters are. Just the shadows of fluffy sheep. So nothing scary, just shadows. You can make shadows too, Tig. You can make your very own shadow puppet show. Go for it, Tig! No more scaries. Yes, I thought. No monsters, just shadows. I'll have fun making my own shadow puppet show. Mummy and Daddy came to see what I was doing. When they saw a big hairy monster with eight legs walking across the ceiling, they went, <gasps> ah! There's a little boy spider on the wood. I like my new light. What's this take? I like making shadow puppet shows. I love Willy. We've been getting since we were three. Getting better. You're not hungry. When I was little, I got ill. I didn't want any tea. 
I hurt all over. What's wrong? I don't feel very well. Oh. Mummy took my temperature. Oops, you're a bit hot, Teg, said Mummy. Let's get you to bed. I didn't feel well. Hello. When Daddy came home, he came to see me. Are you okay? You okay, Teg? Just got a bit of a temperature. No, I said. I don't feel well. Wooly cuddled in beside me. I fell asleep. When I woke up next morning, Mummy looked at me in a funny way. I know what's wrong with you. You've got chicken pox. I see what's wrong with you, Teg, said Mummy. You've got chicken pox. I look like a speckledy thing with little red spots. We'll have to get you better, said Mummy. In the day, Mummy read me lots of stories. My spots itched. Mummy put nice cool stuff all over the spots. I even had spots in my mouth. Mummy gave me lollies. Mummy made me lots of mashy meals and sloppy drinks. This one is Bernard. Bernard and <laughs> At night, Mummy gave me puppet gloves to wear so I didn't scratch. I like my puppet gloves. When Daddy came home, we played. We built things on the table. Every day my spots didn't itch quite so much. Oh, no red. Soon I was painting and drawing and doing things myself. Sometimes I felt a bit better. Sometimes I didn't. One day Mummy said, Tig, I think you're getting a bit better. Would you like Angel round to play? Tig, would you like Angel to come and play? Yes. <gasps> and guess what? She's got chicken pox as well. Yeah. <laughs> Angel's got chicken pox too, said Mummy. I was excited. I got all my toys out for Angel to play with. I played jumping from cushion to cushion. Suddenly, I didn't feel well again. I didn't want to see Angel. The doorbell went. That'll be Angel. There's Angel. I don't want to see anybody because I don't feel very well. No, I said. I don't want to see Angel. Hey, Tig, getting better can take a long time. Sometimes you feel up, sometimes you feel down. Sometimes you feel wobbly, sometimes you feel strange. Getting better is like doing everything for the first time all over again. Whee! Like walking in the street. Or going back to school. Or seeing Angel again. But every time you do something new again, you'll feel a little bit better. So go for it, Tig. Say hi to Angel. It'll make you feel like your old self again. Yes, I thought. I want to be my old self again. You've got spots. I want to see my friend. I want to get better. Angel and me played. When Mummy saw Willy with spots. <gasps> oh. It's only a toy spider. Oh. I like getting better. <laughs> I love Willie. We beat guesses to Willie. Waiting. When I was little, I didn't like waiting. I didn't like waiting for Mummy to finish her work. I didn't like waiting for Daddy to come home. Willie didn't like waiting either. One day, I was waiting for the rain to right, go away. He'll be all day waiting for the rain to stop. Should we go and bake a cake instead? Come on, Why then. don't we bake Come a Dad. cake instead? Said Daddy. Right. We washed our hands and put on our aprons. I put everything on the table. Bowls, sugar, oil, 
Eggs. Oranges and raisins. We need oh, said Daddy. Carrots. Mustn't forget the carrots. Carrots for a cake. I said. Just you wait and see, Tig. Wait and see, said Daddy. Mmm, I thought. I like my carrots with my potatoes. Thank you. Daddy chopped the carrots. And I grated them in a special machine. Daddy grated orange skin. All of it. We tipped sugar into a bowl. Daddy poured sticky oil all over the sugar. Slop went the carrots and oranges. Yuck! Whoa. We broke eggs all over the yuck. I sprinkled raisins. Want you another one? I mixed up the mush. Nothing looks like anything. Is this a cake? I said. Just wait and see, said Daddy. Flump. I dumped some flour and I stirred everything together. I like making cakes. Daddy had a tin with paper. We put the mush into the tin. Into the oven went the tin. Say bye bye to the cake. Bye bye cake. Now to wait, said Daddy. Let's see, see the clock up there. So when the big hand gets to 12, it's ready, OK? And now we just have to wait for the cake to bake. How, how long? Can I see the cake now? I said, we not yet, Egg. We have right, to wait. Nothing was happening. I didn't like waiting. Hey, Tig, waiting for things to happen can be very tiring and dull and yawning. <sighs> Waiting for things to happen can be angry making too. The trouble with waiting for things to happen is that some things just don't seem to happen at all. The time just seems to stop. Tick, tock, tick, tock. But if you want the time to move and things to happen again, then don't sit and wait. Do something else. Have fun and think about other things. And when you're having fun and thinking about other things, things will start happening. So go for it, Tig. Why not have fun and help Daddy clean the kitchen? Then that cake will be baked in no time. Yes, I thought. No use sitting and waiting. I'll do something else. Daddy, can I help you clean up? I helped Daddy do the washing up. Okay. Then it was right, time to take the cake out of the oven. Wow. How lovely does it look? Mmm. Delicious. Right, we we waited again for the cake right, to cool. We Willie played hide and seek with Daddy. Oh, oh, it's a spider. Ah, oh, you got me. It's only a toy spider. Then we ate the carrot cake. I didn't need potatoes. Mm. Because you made it. I don't mind waiting for some things. I love Willy. I love Willy and Willy loves me. We've been together since we were wee. He's nice.